I don't want to be a minister again. Why are they stressing me? Like, nobody ever saved me. Minister Abe Ojomo, thank you for joining us today. Uh, You're welcome. It's lovely to have you on set. Thank you. Uh, we're excited to hear a little bit more about your journey. I mean, that was a powerful ministration tonight. Thank you. And maybe let's start there. Okay. You know, tell us a little bit more about what inspires you when you have those ministrations. For me personally, I feel like I don't have a choice. <laughs> I don't have anything to run to. That's that's my life. That's that's the only thing that keeps me going. And I feel like I'm an altar child. Mm. I derive my life, my stream, from the altar. So whenever I'm up there, I'm a sacrifice. Mm. So until I'm being offered to the people. Mm -hmm. I remain a sacrifice. I think I read a scripture that says that forget about tomorrow. Tomorrow has itself to worry about. So I take my two days today. Tomorrow is another two day. Mm. So, and I think in my journey, I, I when it could have changed. I've not observed, but when I was much younger, I observed that people will minister to people. Sometimes mm -hmm. their lives don't get changed. So I begin to wonder, like, what's the issue? Mm -hmm. Then I, after doing a few sensors, I realized that we always come with a mindset to always pour out. Forgetting that the one who is coming is our king also. Mm -hmm. is, is our river. Like, and when it's feeling one, you should feel all. Mm -hmm. Like, if it's pouring out, you should pour out to me also. But I feel like we just come like, I am the minister, so... I don't want to ever appear before God as a minister. I want to appear before God as a son, as a servant. And servants don't serve until they are given what to serve. Wow. So even vessels, whether or not this or not, your duty is to bear. Mm. So it's your master that determines when and when to pour you out. Yes. So you continue to bear the, the um, what is poured into you until your master decides when to pour out. So personally, that's, that's it for me. That's it like, oh, I give you my best. I don't know if I'll see tomorrow. So I'm always only assured in God. Yeah. You get, so I just want to be part of what God is doing. I don't want to leave this church and people are telling me powerful service. And I don't know what was powerful about the service. Wow. I want wow. to see, the way you are seeing, I want to see God in that way. And it, it literally doesn't exempt the move of God, he actually amplifies it mm -hmm. because the vessel who is there is a dead man. He gets so. That is so powerful. It's so okay. powerful. And you know, I was so inspired um, about the fact that you came from a Muslim home. Yes. And I mean, look at that ministration. Can you share a little bit more about your salvation story? Mm. So, like I was saying, <laughs> we're not serious Muslims. Like, I, I've, I think I've, there were times where I've seen, I've seen, um, charms in my house. I've seen it, like, door post when I was young. Mm. So I knew that if we were fanatic, those things wouldn't be there. Um, I think it was when we go to my grandmother's house, we always go to the mugs. And I only go to most of this food, by the way. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I go to the mugs, like, do all those things. We weren't really intense Christians. And so when I met Jesus, um, in school, it, it was, I had tuberculosis, like I almost died. So I, I think there was a time I told, my, I told the Lord that I did not know that, because I knew that there was something probably higher than me mm -hmm. or something. I was like, if you save me from this, I'm going to serve you for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Like that. So it was after the night, I went to a meeting in school where they preached about new beds. And it was like, Jesus walked into the room. I was crying for not just because I didn't know what I was crying for. After school, I joined the fellowship. I just wanted to know who saved me. It wasn't about saving who saved me. Yes. It was about knowing who. I just wanted to know who is the person who changed me because I had templates. They wanted me to be working in school, so I had the way I was living. 
I put it on hold. That guys, wait, let's let me collect this post. Mm -hmm. When I collect it, after like two months, when yeah. they feel like everything is okay, I'll collect it. But I realized that when I when I started serving in church, in school fellowship, I could not go back to my own ways. So I wanted to know. So what what is the what is that thing that has that is pulling me back from going back to the way that I used to live. So that was what prepared everything. I met Jesus. I didn't have templates for Christianity. I didn't want to be not the one in my life. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it feels like and all of that. I I I didn't meet religion. I met Christ. Wow. You get so I didn't have any template of no moral, no teaching, nothing, nothing. I just saw young people born for God and I wanted to be like them. I wanted to know what they knew. Uh, I, could, I would literally tell the Lord that I wanted to be an intercessor. Even if I didn't know what it meant to pray, I would literally wake up and dream about people and wake up to pray. Maybe so I've always loved to pray. I wanted to pray for people, standing for people. At least, till I meet the one who saved me. Yeah. I should, I feel like those were the ways I could so I've loved Jesus ever since then. I, I'm not sure I do, but I think so. Mm -hmm. So that's such a powerful testimony. And talking about, you know, you wanted to know God for intimacy, to yeah. know Him one on one. Yeah. And that's what really pushed you it's into still, giving your, still, your still life. Now I still feel the same way. Yeah. I remember last year I was telling God that I don't want to be a minister again. I was mm -hmm. tired. I felt like people were demanding of me the things I could not give. Mm -hmm. I felt like I was under pressure. Like, why are they stressing me? Like, nobody gonna save me. Like, why are mm -hmm. they put me under pressure? So, I feel like there's a lot of things I could not, I, I could not become. I, when I stand on stage, I feel like people are, like like those um, disciples who, um, the man at the beautiful was looking up to, they're like, mm -hmm. this thing, the thing where they ask of me, I, I don't get them. Like, I yeah. don't have it. So, it's what I have yes. that I can give. So, I was telling mm -hmm. God that, I don't want to do ministry again. I don't want to be minister. I don't got that. I want to be your abbey. I want to be your baby girl. I want to be, mm. I want to serve from a place of sonship. Mm. I don't want to be a servant that doesn't know sonship. I'm like, let's leave servant to first. Let's, mm -hmm. I, I, I was just tired of, I just wanted to be in God, in God, with God. I wanted everything I wanted to do, everything I would do to be that I, I operate from a place of, Sonship. Mm -hmm. I would give my life as mm -hmm. a son. I would mm -hmm. die at my post mm -hmm. as a son. And God began to tell me that a servant can change with his master, his boy, son cannot. So I'm like, I, I, I wanted to be a son. I mean, lot of people who leave confines of comfortability that is serve God outside and they forget Jesus. I'm like, how did they forget? Like, they were just servants. Mm -hmm. a, son, a son would never change his father. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I was like, I just want to serve God. Void of pressures. I can't be an actually I can't pressure. Mm. Don't everything outside and I'll still be where I am. Okay, so it's your first uh time in Cosa. Yes. Can you share a bit about your experience as oh, a guest? Oh, it's not my first time actually. Ah. I've okay. been here before. I came when um Tai Tribert. Okay. I think one year like that. And the first time that Tai Tribert came. Yes. So I came. I was here. I think I sat down somewhere. Ah. There. But it's your first time as a minister yes, in Cosa. And how awesome. Um, tell us about your experience as a minister. I think it was it was from the step first time I walked in during sound check. I felt I felt I felt the strange presence of God. Wow. That's my knowing actually. Mm -hmm. It's my knowing to know that mm, God is here. Like no, that God was here today. Yeah. <laughs> so it was from even when we went back, came back here, it, the tangibility of the presence of God. It was seeming as though everything was quiet, but there was this quickening. And from when PB preached the word, remember when I was on flight, I heard the word, I heard this word, um, they they don't hear my voice. And I'm like, boy, you said your sheep hear your voice on the phone. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what it meant until he mentioned it on stage. I'm like, oh. Yes. Mm. So I was trying to look at my guys because I was trying to talk to them. I told them about them. Like, I'm like, so it was confirmation of a lot of things mm -hmm. for me. It was it was an awesome experience and Cosa City Choir. Yeah. yeah. They're amazing, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> so, if you guys are watching this, like, who are you? 
I do. And there's something about speech, about, about sound. When there's excellence in your sound, there are, there, are, there are some dimensions that are unlocked. Mm. In bad music, God is there. But when there's this excellency, there's this potency of, I don't know how to explain it. So excellence does it for me. Like when there's this excellency of sound, it's like everything is in alignment. Right That's some di- yeah. mm, they don't plenty dimensions. <laughs> like, but it was it was it was it was an awesome atmosphere and I enjoyed it. That's fantastic. Thank you. Um, and perhaps just in uh, in closing, you know, there'll be a lot of young people um, in the industry looking up to you um, as a mentor in that industry uh, and obviously wanting to also live the God kind of life, but having peer pressures that might suggest they do otherwise. Um, what word of advice would you give to them? So I've been saying this in cover. So I've been saying this in cover. The one whom you are waiting for, for attestation, is always also waiting for attestation from mm-hmm. the Lord. So the one whom you are waiting for to tell you word, will stand before God waiting that he tells him word. Yes. So if you don't do what God asks you to do, because you are waiting for a man to affirm the things that God has said to you, don't forget that the same man will stand before God expecting the Lord. So why not just wait on the Lord that he is waiting on? Mm-hmm. So yes. do what you have to do now. If you always have to wait for someone to tell you, go. Like yo, mm. the time is now. Now is the time. And I, I will say, don't be under pressure. If you truly the one you, the Lord is the one who tells you, well done. You should walk at His pace. Don't walk behind. Don't walk ahead. Mm-hmm. Stay. And I advise people. When God gives an instruction, don't improve it. Hmm. Don't modify it. Don't do less. Make sure that you are at the peace of God. You are right on point, right on time. You know, when Jesus, uh, once of my sins came to me, the Lord, and he said, we did this, all these things. We did this in your name. We did this. That thing, that scripture changed my life. Mm-hmm. Because I'm like, if I debit your account, you suppose get a lot. So if I use your name, take you the sick, yes. you suppose get even the people you did not intentionally want to heal, touch the hem of your garment yes. and you felt yes. it. So what is it? Why are you telling me that? I I have I went to nations, I did crusades, shut down stadiums, people dead rose up, the blind saw. How can you, after all these things, you're telling me that you don't know who I am? He said, but by every man will leave. Mm-hmm. So you can do all these things and God does not. God is like, mm. wait, I'm like, who are you? Like, so you have to leave. By the template of God, by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. If God is not in it, he should not be there. Mm. If well done is what you're looking for, if God is not in it, and there's no such thing as my time is going. Yeah. God doesn't even deal with time. Yeah. So if he says, mm, I will do it tomorrow, you're, you're tomorrow my God will be next year. He's mm-hmm. outside of time. So when he says, chill, like there's no pressure. Mm-hmm. He's the one you want to impress. And how would you even impress him? Yeah. He's giving you a template to run. So what you have to do, do now. Don't be under pressure. Don't... I don't know how far this thing will go, but fame, wealth, riches, platform. To pass away. Scripture says even the heaven and the earth, the heaven that we are looking up to get to. Said even heaven and earth will pass away. Said, but if it's one who would remain, his reign is for internal. Mm-hmm. So it just says that it's shown as being before time in memoria. It means that before time, God will know about itself. He has been reigning. Mm-hmm. So if he tells you, this is what I want you to do. Guy, just one. Mm. Don't be under pressure. Mm, you, know, you don't need them. If it tells you stay, be small. If you become big, you are not in his way. Mm. If it tells you be big and you are small, you are not there. So wherever the Lord is, is where you should be. Mm. So. And you're so right. Because our global senior pastors always talk about growing up. You know, because if we grow up, we stay up. Mm. 
Thank you so much. Thank That's been much. so inspirational. So and much. we look forward to another time of getting more inspirational thank notes you. from you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And to the viewers, thank you so much for being part of this. 12 Days of Glory continues. And we look forward to seeing you at tomorrow's session. Yes. We celebrate you. Yes.